What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. In today's video, I'm going to address the elephant in the room, or in this case, the gazelle in the room. So before we dive into this too far, um, I put out product review videos for overland gear, camping gear, some automotive you know, equipment. And in this video, you're gonna see some footage of me using the Gazelle tent on various trips and, and different adventures. So if you like what you see, feel free to head on over to the Varsity Overland YouTube channel. You can subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future adventures. Right now I am prepping for a trip to Colorado from the East Coast. So it's going to be probably about three and a half weeks. Going to be great. Huge deal for me. Huge deal for uh, my wife and I. It's been about two years since we've been to Colorado, but we won't be taking the gazelle tent. And that's kind of what got my, my thought process started about making this quick video regarding the gazelle tent. So about seven months ago, I put together a video where I purchased the gazelle tent. I had already been using a rooftop tent, an eye camper, sky camp, 2.0 rooftop tent, uh, but I was really curious about the gazelle tent because I had seen a lot of it, a lot of footage of it being used um, by various overlanders uh, on social media. So I was really interested in, in how this kind of tent would work as opposed to a rooftop tent. So I made that video probably six or seven months ago, said that I was going to be using the gazelle tent through uh, the fall, the winter, and then the spring, and possibly in the summer. I used it for a few trips and then the snow fell in the winter and I quickly realized that the Gazelle is not necessarily the best winter camping tent. It is very thin. Uh, you have to clear the ground in order to set it up. So if, you know, there's several inches or, or you know, more than that of snow on the ground, then you're going to have to clear a path for it, basically. And on top of that, I did have a mishap in the fall during a trip to Massachusetts when I had another pop-up awning at camp flip over my truck and land on top of the gazelle and puncture the rain fly on the top. It's not a gigantic hole that's deal breaker for the tent, but it does limit its ability to shed water. So that was completely my fault. That had nothing to do with Gazelle or, you know, like the construction of the tent or anything like that. That was just me, you know, being dumb and uh, not breaking down camp on a night when I knew it was going to be windy. But yeah, I just wanted to mention some of the things that I've experienced with the Gazelle tent over the past seven months. Honestly, the tent is amazing. It's, it's a very viable, very good viable option uh, to have for overlanding. It, first of all, is very light. I love that I can just pick it up, move it around. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So when I store it in my garage, you know, I can pack it up on a shelf. I can lean it up against the wall. I can, you know, bring it inside the house if I really wanted to and probably put it in a closet or something like that. Mine, mine does stay inside the garage. But the tent itself is lightweight. It's easy to move, easy to manage, and it's also easy to set up. It doesn't it doesn't have all the same problems that like those old school ground camping tents have. The ones that I remember from when I was a kid. I used to hate setting up my, my tent when I would go out uh, for a weekend with my buddies. It was like I wanted to set it up and, and be done with it. If it was a one-nighter, I was like, okay, not even worth it um, because of how complex it was to set up like the old school kind of tents. So this tent is super simple. It pops out, the, the sidewalls pop out very easily. It is compact. The bag that you use to store it is overly sized for it. So it's not hard to close it up or, you know, uh, put it away. So I took the gazelle tent down to uh, my local state forest one afternoon in, I think it was January, might've been December. 
but uh, I took it down there, set it up, was considering staying the night and quickly, you know, just kind of like realized it's, it is freezing. Um, the temperature was definitely below freezing and the sun hadn't even set yet. There was just a dusting. We didn't get a lot of snow this year, but um, just a dusting, but still it was just, you know, I don't know if you want to say I wimped out, but I wimped out. So determined that the Gazelle tent is not the winter camping tent for me. It did hold up fine in the fall with temperatures barely over freezing. Um, it held up pretty well in the rain. It, hel it held up well in the wind and it definitely would have done better if I had just done my due diligence and staked everything down like I should have. Um, but then the spring, I did break out the Gazelle tent again and I took it on a trip to New York in the Finger Lakes National Forest uh, with a friend of mine, Jeremy, from AT4 Overland Bound. I just recently put out those videos, so if you wanna see the Gazelle tent being used with our brand new 2023 Forerunner, you can head over to my channel for that too. Second, second shameless plug to head over to my channel. So throw me a bone, people. The material, although thin, does feel high quality, it does feel strong. And I'll admit the fact that it is thin and the fact that the top of it is all mesh, it has a mesh ceiling. Uh, when you remove the rain fly on top, it, the top of it is all mesh. So, you know, the fact that it is thin material plus the mesh ceiling, um, like I said, it's not great for winter, but if you take those ideas and you just apply them to warm weather, all of a sudden it's a great tent. So I've gotten a couple questions regarding uh, some of the things that I've put in various YouTube videos with the Gazelle tent. Um, one of them reoccurring is, uh, is the tent too long or too big to fit inside of a vehicle? Because in my New York video and in my Massachusetts video, I use the Gazelle tent on the outside. I mount it to either my bed rack of the truck or the roof rack of um, the Forerunner. So I've gotten a couple questions asking, you know, like, hey, is the, is the tent too long? Does it not fit in the bed of your truck? Does it not fit inside the SUV when you have the seats down or whatever? Uh, and the answer is no, it, it can definitely fit inside of those things. The tent itself, when it's all packed away, is I think just about five feet tall, uh, or I should say five feet long. Um, so it's not like it can't fit in the bed of a truck, even even a, a smaller bed truck like the one that I have in my Colorado ZR2, it could fit inside. I just like to pack other items inside there, things that I don't care about, um, or things that I do care about, I'm sorry, getting too wet or too dirty or whatever. The tent inside of the the sleeve that it goes into in, in the big bag, it's, you know, it's, it gets filthy. It can get wet. It can, you know, it can get roughed up and whatever. I don't really care. So I mount that thing to the outside, uh, with the SUV. That's, that's obvious the forerunner. I don't want it inside because it still suffers from the same problem that all ground tents suffer from is it's on the ground. You still have to pack it away inside of essentially a duffel bag. Uh, and when you're doing all of this, it's exposed to the elements, it's on the ground and it gets dirty. So if you have something like a Forerunner or an SUV and you don't want the inside to get, you know, filthy, then you probably want to get like a rack that you can mount on top. With the truck though, I just, I just chose to put it on my bed rack instead of in the bed because I'm difficult, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but one of the other questions that I get about the tent is if I could go back before I got the Gazelle, before I got my eye camper, if I could go back, would I still choose to start with a rooftop tent? Knowing what I know now about the Gazelle, I've gotten to people that ask some questions like, what do I prefer? And it's tough because there's pros and cons, like I said. Um, it's gotta be on the ground, not totally ideal for some people, but it's super light and rooftop tents are heavy very heavy you know the the hard shell rooftop tent that that we use the eye camper is 160 pounds so putting that thing on the truck taking it off the truck um primarily because it doesn't fit in the garage otherwise it's it, it's a project it's it's energy it's time it's just it's a lot of effort moving this thing when i want to take it out for a weekend is like you know get a phone call hey you want to go camping tonight oh yeah let me grab the gazelle okay i'm done here we go. 
So anyway, if I had to go back in time, if I had to choose, which one would I prefer? I think if you're just starting out, go with a gazelle or maybe something like super similar to a gazelle. It sets up real easy. It's reputable. It's well known. Um, it does the job, but it doesn't cost a lot of money and it's also not crazy heavy. I personally would probably, if I could go back in time, knowing what I know now, I'd probably just go with a rooftop tent that's lighter. I would try to take everything I love about this tent, take everything I love about the iCamper and just marry all that stuff together. And I would try to go with a, a rooftop tent that's lighter, even if that meant going with a soft shell rooftop tent. A lot of people have an idea that soft shells aren't, aren't durable or they're not warm enough or whatever. I, I have a lot of friends that use soft shell rooftop tents and it, they're great. So if I could go back in time, I would probably go with a soft shell or at least a lighter rooftop tent. There's even some hard shell and I'm using air quotes here, hard shell rooftop tents because uh, the material on them is a little bit more like a like a tanu cover of a bed versus an actual like fiberglass cover. But there's some hard shell rooftop tents that have been released over the last year or so. Um, Inspired Overland is one of them, for example. And those are clamshells that open up really fast, but the tent itself is only like a hundred pounds or, or even, even less than that. So I've seen people move those tents like by themselves, just throw them up on top of their, their rack and bolt them down and they're good. So that kind of seems like the perfect marriage between both types of tents. So am I going to recommend that you invest in a Gazelle T4 hub tent? Yes, definitely. It is a very good tent. I'd say it's a three season, a very good durable three season tent. Um, unless you have no problem freezing your butt off, then go for a four season situation and try it out in the snow. If you have used this in the snow, let me know. Comment down below and say, yep, hey, uh, Varsity Overland, you're just a wimp and you can't handle the cold. And that could completely be true. I would definitely recommend this tent. And the next question would be, who am I gonna recommend this tent for? If you are someone who is just getting into camping, traveling, overlanding, um, I'm gonna recommend this tent. It's very easy to understand, it's easy to set up, it's easy to manage. If you find out that you know this hobby or this, I don't even know if you wanna call it a lifestyle, but if this lifestyle isn't for you, then you didn't spend several thousand dollars on a tent and never use it. You know, this, this tent is not as expensive as some of the rooftop tents that are out there. I would also recommend the Gazelle T4 hub tent to anyone who is trying to be conservative with the weight of their vehicle. Or if they don't want their vehicle to be top heavy, because when you put a rooftop tent on top of a vehicle, it changes everything about the center of gravity and the dynamics and all that kind of stuff. With this, even if you put it on top of a, of a cab rack or a roof rack, it's doesn't change really anything. I think the tent itself is like 50 or 60 pounds. If that, I might be exaggerating. So I'm gonna recommend if, if you are a hardcore off-roader, for example, and you don't want a lot of weight on top of your vehicle, then maybe try out this tent. Or if you're someone who plans on traveling very, very, very long distances and gas mileage is a huge factor for you and you don't want your vehicle to be extremely heavy, I would say definitely try out this tent as well. All right, folks, well, that's gonna be it for this video. If you've made it this far and you haven't liked the video yet, please do me a favor and uh, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, I'm gonna add a third shameless plug to this video. I just recently released a website for myself. So if you want, head on over to www.varsityoverland.com. You can check out both of our vehicle builds. We've got Goose, my 2021 Chevy Colorado ZR2, and then the Roadrunner, our 2023 Toyota 4Runner. Um, I've got a whole build list of everything that's been used on both of those vehicles. Um, it's updated up to about a few weeks ago. Um, we did recently just install an awning on the truck. I don't think I have that on the website yet, but if you're not watching this right at the release date, um, then it's, it's probably been updated. In fact, if you are watching this on the release date, we're probably currently in Colorado already. So anyway, 
Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Peace, people.